APC Ohanese Takala Tiku over comments at Arawa Forum. Ekiti Governor Oyebanji rolls out six point agenda. And this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakom. Controversy has trailed comments of the People's Democratic Party PDP presidential candidate al Haji Atiku Abubakar, who reportedly advised Northerners to reject Yoruba or Igbo presidency in 2023 polls. Atiku was responding to questions posed by Northern leaders during the Arawa Joint Committee interactive session comprising the Arawa Consultative Forum, Northern Elders Forum, Saamadu Belu Memorial Foundation, Jamia Matan Arawa, Arawa Research and Development Project and other bodies parley with presidential candidates at the Arawa House on Saturday. Now, the PDP flag bearer, while appealing for the support of the Arawa leaders, said, and I quote, I have traversed the whole of this country. I think that an average northerner needs what the average or northerner needs is somebody who is from the north and who also understands the various parts of Nigeria and who has been able to build bridges across the various parts of the country. Now, reacting to that, the Johannes Indibo, in a statement by its Secretary General, Mazio Kechuku Isiguzoro, uh, said that Atiku's utterances had finished whatever was left of the PDP. APC also upbraided Atiku over his comment, now the party's national publicity secretary, Felix Morka, remarked that Atiku's position spoke volumes that he was unfit to administer the country, arguing that Atiku's posture at the Arewa Town Hall policy dialogue in Kaduna was an attack on national unity. Well, joining us to discuss this is Alex Ogbona. He's the National Publicity Secretary, Ohanese Ndibo, and, of course, Ose Aneni, who is a PDP chieftain. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Glad to be here. Great. Um, also, I'll start with you because you're, of course, uh, a PDP member, and you obviously are from uh, the south-south uh, of the country. Um, when your presidential candidate said what he said, um, how did that sit well with you? Uh, I think the media has a responsibility to discussing not just what's taken out of the context, but the context before the statement was made and context after it. If you actually watch that interview, what the question I think was asked was, why should the average northerner trust him? Why should the average northerner vote for him? So he was speaking to a very specific voter demographic. And even in saying that, he said, don't vote for ethnic identity. Don't vote for a Yoruba candidate. Don't vote for Igbo candidate. But vote for me, a pan-Nigerian northerner who can feel to do Across the nation. Atiku has always put himself forward as a unifier, as a person who can heal our divisions that have never been as wide as they are today. In 2019, Ohanese embraced him and recognized that faith in him. The letter doesn't change his, his thoughts. Atiku has always had a pan Nigerian vision for, for Nigeria. So I, I understand that we are in politics. In political season, I understand that the media have maybe a larger appetite for sensationalism. No, but maybe the greater tragedy is that he spoke about so many other things that could affect the lives of the other Nigeria. He spoke about the structuring, he spoke about the devolution of power, about state police, about women's inclusion, about the flooding and how he would address it. But we just want to take a sound by taking it of context to paint him in roles that he doesn't own. It's funny hearing, for instance, the APC condemn the statement again taken out of context when their presidential candidate was seen saying, Emmy Lokan, Yoruba Lokan, it is my turn, it is the turn of the Yoruba. So I'm curious, I'm curious, Jose, so because one party did it, I mean, this is a, an election season that we're going into and asking for the messaging to be as. Um, you know, unifying as possible. But then here you are speaking for the PDP saying, well, 
if party A did this, what, why should we not do it? Is is that the, the no, but, is that the kind of okay. is that the kind of um, you know idea we want to run with uh, in this political season? Because you're saying that the media also seems to be playing for soundbite. Um, but then there were people who were at that forum who heard whether he said 101 good things and then said. The, the average northerner needs a northerner. You don't think that that would one way or the other tick, you know, the senses of every other person who may not be a northerner? I, I think the question you just asked me makes my point perfect. What I said was that as people speaking to a room of northerners who asked him why the northerners vote for him, said, even though I'm a northerner, vote for me because I'm a pan Nigerian who can build bridges across the nation. That's what he said. He didn't say vote for me because I'm a northerner and don't vote for others because of their But did identity. he, but did he, he not don't vote for say that militant. as a northerner, what a northerner needs is, is a northerner? What exactly do you think he meant by that? By saying, well, because, I'm, uh, because you guys are northerners, what you need is a northerner. And everything what else that said, came after that. What he said, uh, let me explain. What he Couldn't said he have is, said that what, uh, what you need is a unifier, what you need is someone who can build bridges, other than saying what you need is a Norsner? Don't you think it's a very sensitive statement, sincerely? Again, the question that you are asking is devoid of context. He was asked a question based on ethnic identity. He was asked, why should I, a Northerner, vote for you? And he elevated the conversation beyond ethnic identity. He said, don't vote for ethnic identity. Vote for people with an Nigerian vision and perspective. Who can build bridges and who can unify? But that isn't the reporter. OK. Let me, let me throw this to uh, Mr. Gwenaya. Mr. Gwenaya, can you hear me? Mr. Gwenaya, can you hear me? Well, I don't think that um, we have Mr. Bona, so let, let me stay with you, uh, Ose. Now, let's look at other issues. Now, recently, we, um, the, the deputy governor of uh, Lagos State was quoted to have said that uh, a certain political party and its candidate should take its campaign to where he's from. And these are some of the divisive statements that the former president, Olusha Kwabasanjo, has spoken against. He has said that the messaging coming from politicians have to be very deliberate, well thought out, because these messaging could, one way or the other, make or mar us as a country. Again, I ask, as we start off this campaign season, what should be the watchword of these political figures, especially those who are running to, for the highest seats in this country? I think, you know, we are maybe taking the start of campaign and candidates are already adopting the objective. So if I come up here and talk about the unifier, everybody knows what I'm talking about. And, I, and, and it's important, you know, Atiku has a, a manifesto called the Unity Team. It's unity, security, economy, education, and devolution of power. The first thing, is unity. The only word in that upcoming that is spelled out in full is unity. Because he recognizes that Nigeria is divided. And before he can fix any other thing, we must come together to one nation. So it's one thing, honestly, when I see people trying to tell, you know, or put narrative that he's divisive, that he wants to put an ethnic agenda, he isn't the one. Tinubu is reported as having sold up the South West because he's from the South West. Peter is reported as having sold up the South East because he's from the South East. The only candidate running who they say, oh, he's not northern enough to have sold up the South, the North, and he's not liberal enough to have sold up the South, is my candidate because he's the only one running on the Pan Nigerian platform. He's the only one refusing to adopt ethnic or religious programs. And it would help if the press recognized it and didn't fall for the big big headlines that the APC and other parties are pushing. That's what I would say. Now, um, Ohaneje, uh, of course, has reacted to this. The APC has also said that what he said was disingenuous. Now, you have already shut that down because you're saying uh, that we're taking it out of context. I did listen to um, you know, the, a representative of the campaign who said um, that this this particular statement was taken out of context. But now that we, um, the campaign train has, you know, set itself rolling and, you know, 
Atiku will be seen speaking more and more about issues that one way or the other would help the average Nigerian to vote for him or not. I want to ask you as a member of the PDP, when we talk as Nigerians about a unifier, um, what, are the, what do you think the characteristics of a unifier is and can we find those characteristics in your candidate? Yeah, I uh, saw the statement that... Uh, uh, an Islamable uh, rhetoric, uh, something that touches uh, on the sensitivity of the civic virtue of Nigeria. So, in Nigeria, there is more the cultural relationship that has to be managed with uh, the quorum. So somebody at the high, somebody that attained the height of right hand of Nigeria. And very much put in Nigerian politics is the least expected of him to have used such the ethnic cast, you know, in promoting his uh, candidacy. So we felt that um, he's also trying to bring out his mind, his mindset, you know, his reasoning, which him that the seat belongs to that idealistic Islamic um, oligarchy. You know, where they can configure something and market it and everything buy it. So somebody like I think we are trying to remind him that uh, of all the emotive forces, the two ethnic forces that economic salvation is the wind that is doing. That correct by salvation we are talking about the redemption of this country, how to recover the casting for the future generation. Mm. And somebody who has the perspective, somebody who had the credentials, somebody who had the reputation for accomplishment. That's what Nigeria is looking for now. Uh, social media revolution has also done a lot of work. It is no longer in the past where somebody can come in and uh, impose on every brother before you know it. You begin to change the tone. So, uh, we condemn the remark by the second year by. I think I'll go back As not as unexpected as him, for some reason that is predicting is to that extent uh of the channels of that holds Nigeria together. Okay. Um so, we've been speaking with Ose, and Ose is saying, just as, of course, a representative of the party had said earlier today that these, these things that we are interpreting had been taken out of context, that he was answering a question um, that was posed to him as a Northerner. Um, why should a Northerner vote for you? Hence his response. But you're saying that this is a calculated attempt, um, which you are kicking against. Uh, but but Ose is saying that this was quoted out of context. It was not necessarily what he he you know intended to say. But again, I want to ask you because you've said that this is not what Nigeria wants, and you have listed the characteristics that you think the Nigerian of today Nigeria of today needs. And I'm wondering, um, you do not think that Atiku Abubakar has these characteristics, uh, not even one of them. Uh, when you talk about Taking out of context, uh, that's a way that the company has to be whole. That sometimes people have to realize that some of them, of course, watch it on a video when it's pronounced. Also, some people think that it was a joke. But the true sense of it is that some people are not expected. No matter how they try to deny it, I think. Uh, by saying that it's a joke, we have to go further by apologizing to Nigeria that um, it was uh, a previous list, you know, which is not intended to take the tension that is generated now. So, whichever way it is, the fact has been said that Pakapapa Belewa, the Gobeshen Shakari, you know, who voted in Yaradua. So there's no justification. Even as if you said by the time you confessed four years ago, they started to vote him on March. And he claimed the election was rigged. 
in all the world, no one would have won the election by the instrumentality of the universal support. So how can he at this time be thinking to talk about uh, make the city statements, playing a play card, and try to set the very call that goes in the world together? So uh, it's disappointing, and then you should go beyond saying that you should go to apologize to Nigeria and convince all that uh, okay. it means well. Okay. Also, I'm going to toss back to you now. Um, many have touted this particular elections in 2023 to be very, um, you know, regional election as some of the, or most of the candidates, the front-running candidates, seem to be um, somewhat um, regional candidates. They seem to be um, pushing for their region. It's either saying, oh, it's the turn of the south, or it's the turn of the southwest, or it's the turn of the north. Um, how can how can your candidates blur these lines? Because we're talking about Tiku Abubakar today. Um, but again, with this statement that many people have reacted to, it seems to go further to buttress the fact that maybe this elections are more regional than national. Yeah, um, so the, 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 this this conversation is not about the statement. As it is made, because taking in context, there's nothing wrong with it. It simply is because we are having very similar to what we had in 1979, almost what we are said to be regional justice of power. And um, I want to talk back to 2019, where the same Ohanese, because you're asking the question, doesn't actually to describe. Ohanese in 2019, in January, said, Atiku has made a vow and a vow commitment to the structuring of the Federation and has confirmed the same vision this is to, to America. That they know particular that PDP has given their son, Peter B, the vice presidential candidate, and has just given Indigo an opportunity for inclusivity. Okay. So it's almost hilarious to me to hear an, an ethnic social political organization come up. And, and start railing against what they perceive to be ethnic conversation. Because that's literally their raison d'etre. So very, very, um, how, how to say it? It, it, it makes sense because Nigeria is such a diverse country. You need people defending all interests, majority interests and minority interests, whether it's religion or ethnicity or tribe or whatever. So there's nothing wrong with our diversity, and there's nothing wrong with identifying it. But I think what in the basic conversation is when somebody says, I am Igbo, I am Hausa, I am Yoruba, but I am also more than that. I am Nigerian, and I can build bridges across the nation. And this is what exactly as people that. said. If, if we're at a point Arawa. in our country where we're trying to blur these lines of ethnicity, of religion, why even put that in a conversation? Why not say I am Nigerian? I do not I do not care what part of Nigeria that you know you might want to put me in, but I am Nigerian and this is the kind of Nigeria that I envisage to run, as opposed to saying, well, as a Northerner or as a, a South Easterner or as a South Southerner. Why can't we just start from where we want you know the country to get to? I'm just asking in closing quickly. Ose, can you hear me? Uh, I think that uh, I lost um, Ose. Well, unfortunately, that's the most we can take on this segment. We have to um, abruptly end this. Uh, Ose Aneni is a PDP chieftain, and of course, Alex Abuna <laughs> is of the Ohanese Ndigo. Um, but we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about the newly sworn in Ekiti State Governor and his six point agenda. Stay with us.